I've decided for the time being I can live with a bun. I can live with a bun. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I didn't feel I needed some fortification today. I brought a beer. <laughs> and I brought a soda. <laughs> if I need that. They're on ice. If I need them. Something to eat. Let me see. What else? Um, Mary's Gone Crackers, yeah, onion and sweet potato, late July, nice. We've got, whoops, rugged cheddar cheese, and some Hope Thai coconut curry hummus, and Siggy's triple cream uh, lemon yogurt. Good thing that's on sale. That is a cute little four ounce cup. Anyway, I brought plastic ware. I brought utensils and napkins for two. Look what I can do. Um, let's keep it here. I picked up some felt. So I have this idea for the quilt. I don't know if I talked about it yesterday. But um, I was thinking about it. Uh, on the quilt with the hexagons um, to look like a honeycomb, I was thinking to leave one hexagon, uh, so it'd be gold hexagons on a white background. I was thinking of leaving one originally uh, empty, so there's no hexagon there. Make it a white hexagon, make it blend in with the back. Then I thought of, of doing seven, which would create effectively a, fl a flower, like a flower pattern. You know, you have the center and then you have petals of hexagons around it uh, to represent flow, flow flower. And uh, to do that, uh, rather than just leaving one hexagon, to do seven. Uh, leave them empty, uh, high right of what would be the headboard uh, backing or drape that, that fell from the canopy and comprised the headboard. Um, although it's not a board, so you're, you're the head of the bed. Um, then I thought to take that center hexagon of the flow, of the flower, of the seven, take the center and actually create a hole. can't get to that right now. So actually cut the hexagon shape out and uh, create a hexagon shape that you can see through. See through is a uh, C E A period T parentheses H R U E. See the E through C, see the wall. If you can see through, you're going to be able to see through the, and see the wall, see the, the, the hue, the hue of the wall that you're seeing through. So um, I like the idea of that. I, I've been weighing it because I like the, I'm trying to convey a symbolic architecture simply. So I don't want to overcomplicate it, but the more I think about it, the more I do want to make that one see-through. I think it intensifies the intent <laughs> of the design and it lends a complexity that I feel that anyone can follow. Feel. Now I've ordered uh, EPP, English Paper Pieces, hexagon shape. So you glue and fold the fabric over to handily uh, get those shapes and sew a quilt. 
Um, I ordered 400. It's roughly $15, I think. But I have another thought. One that I've not learned from anyone else is actually creating hexagon shapes in felt. Why would I do that? To give a little elevation off the quilt, be it the gold on the white background or the white in the flow in the flower to give them elevation. Um, so I got samples today to try. This is 100% wool. It's to me, it's got a little bit. It's got a little bit of stretch, and it's a little more. One might say flimsy, but it's malleable. It's flexible. And then this is, uh, if I recall, is it 35% wool, 65% rayon? It's wool and rayon. It's a bit. It's uh, more compressed and it doesn't have as much stretch. Um, anyway, so I'm still fielding possibilities about how to construct that with ideology. What does ideology, ideology mean in this context? I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking it through and I'm thinking it thinking about it, thinking it through to represent, to mean, to me, to me means the answer, to, to represent uh, the meaning uh, as the means to process and product. What else? Uh, I need to bring this over here. <laughs> Anyway, I kind of like the idea. I like the symbology. Felt, wool with who? 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 W. With. H. Parentheses. Zero divided by zero. L. E. I've been thinking about um, the, the, the Velcro at the top of the frame. I am capable, capable enough to take my frame apart because I put it together. <laughs> I'm still of sound mind and body to put the frame of the canopy uh, uh, together, to put it together and to take it apart. I can do that. However, for my ease of use, both in hanging it for the first time or if I decided I didn't want it there or I wanted to move the arrangement. I don't foresee I'm going to be doing that a lot, but certainly there is a convenience to just unattach the hook and loop and take down the drape or the curtain or the backing, uh, the honeycomb gesture <laughs> I make straight trait. Um, easy as that. Um, I prefer the Velcro. I've, it's going to be ease of use. I figure putting it on. There is some engineering to have that S aesthetically appealing and that is, you know, how to uh, create those seams and lines of sewing to have it go over you know, you got to put Velcro on one side and Velcro on the other. And traditionally, that requires, you know, stitching, stitching around the whole thing. So how to do that and how to hide it, how to hide it so it's not a, a distraction to the overall design. And one of the things I'm thinking is that fabric that's going to go over the, the rod, <laughs> the frame, to hang the drape is to make that a separate swath and to put in the velcro both sides as I want. 
then open it flat so it's not turned over. It'll be turned over the rod. This is the rod. It'd be turned over in position of hanging, but for creating the rest, then so put the other long backing of white silk, run the um, hexagons on top of it. So there will be, where it hangs, there'll be some hexagons that are uh, overlapping the Velcro. And it's one way to hide the fact that there's sewing lines underneath it where the Velcro is. Uh, it's, for me, it's an interesting meta to think about who felt, who felt. Um, who feels, who felt. And um, to eschew the words you currently sell and tell and selt a uh, flavor labor lavor lave is to wash uh what else yeah so i had some thoughts and i, I I don't know if I'm gonna, we'll see. I got some things to think on. <clears throat> One of the things that I forgot to express yesterday is I have some options here. Combine with someone, <laughs> in word, dactyly speaking, relevantly, taking place now. If you're gonna speak of the air, be the air here, <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Do not regard me, J.J. Abrams, of having block sensitivity when you have not geared the earth, gear the earth first. Uh, you're speaking to two dudes. When you and Annie Cruz meet, you'll be speaking to two, two dudes, duds. Duds, dudes, put your hyphens in. Um, you doing sci-fi, you're, you're building, up, you've already made DUP. So you can keep making dup on that without boundaries. I'm here to inform you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you've already screwed the you. It's hyphenated. And uh, you can only give a fuck to. So go buck your tooth. <laughs> fuck, buck, and tuck your tooth. <laughs> Hyphen D. Uh, that's what it amounts to. Um... You're parsing politeness and creativity with no honest foundation you've ever given. Duh. <laughs> so I would yap, appreciate it, in in the space <laughs> uh, that you fornicate. If you wouldn't actually dilate on any presence, you don't care to be present to toe uh, t parentheses h parentheses, parentheses d toe how and dow with a r e What else? Um, <laughs> that includes with Jimmy Fallon playing, doing your little sitcom funny thing on uh, Jimmy Fallon about the play that went wrong and those playwrights. <laughs> you can hear the hyphens in my accent, I imagine. So you're making shit up. It's hyphenated. You're posing yourselves as players as you're handing doffed and standing for doffed. Your image is doffed. And Doff sees that he ate, toffed, 
Well, he was doffed, and he beads doffed. The doff can be doffed. <laughs> With equal tooth hyphen D to toss. And hand the and catch it. Thief end. Doffed to two toffed. That's all your image stands for. Jimmy Fallon, J.J. Abrams, the playwrights of the play that went wrong. P hyphen parentheses L hyphen A Y E hyphen D hyphen. None of you are thinking it through. You're not building on an honest foundation, and I dare say, neither can you afford to because you're not being to, so you can't afford to. You can only falsify skills <laughs> that you would follow through, but you honestly don't give a fuck to in process or product. I get to belabor a point of thinking for you as you're fucking all over the fucking place and feeling as if you would. <laughs> okay. I'm here to assure you, you would not. Thus, I must prostitute myself and continue. <laughs> uh, contember, continue belaboring my wealth and health of what I would eschew and see that you chew E W E L L. <laughs> D. <laughs> Before you think, you're going to speak as if you would, but you never could. Because you don't have a spine that's actually brave uh, to, to have. <laughs> H A V E N. O M <laughs> E parentheses A I D <laughs> So you're not really you're creating entertainment to reposition yourself in what you're handing doffed to to toffed to get toffed but toff does not have an honest lot L O T. Again, I'm thinking it through. So I think you should start thinking about paying me to paint you for continually passing off and not knowing your boundaries. You do not get to have an image of love or politeness when you do not bring it do of. What you bring is do of doffed. You've already passed a doff and screwed the you to doff to two toft. Oh, but we're not like Trump and dump. Well, I say you are. You're still pursuing to get toft. But toft does not have a low T by your lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's hyphenated. <laughs> so stop falsifying skills. Stop stepping up thinking that you've got time to kill with your skills it's not actually funny I was at Whole Foods yesterday bought most of these items but I bought a beer I bought a tangerine beer and I asked the person because I don't buy beer that often I said I want to buy one can I buy one and he says yes if you buy a bottle they'll scan it and they'll bring it, ring it up individually. If you buy a can, you have to let me or the person in wine know so that they can put a, a ticket, like a, a sticker price on it. I said, okay. And he says, if you wouldn't mind, if you take a bottle out, you know, out of a pack, put the pack out so I'm aware of it. So he was right there. I knew which one I wanted. I got the tangerine. I put, put the bottle, put the, the pack out. Let him know, hey, you know, he turned his back. I'm like, getting this. He looked back. He saw the pack. You know, this was our conversation. I follow through. I get to the to the cashier, and she's her name's Tree. She's very tall. 
she's like, I, she's talking very slow and apologetically, like, I can't, this is not ringing. And I tried to tell her, well, you know, uh, I just talked to the guy. He said that it would ring through. And he's like, I, 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 and I'm like, she tried to go off on parsing what if possibility. And I said, look, I just talked to him and he saw me do it. Okay, there's a reason I took this action because someone communicated to me. Okay, so let's not go into what if land. <laughs> he was right there. <laughs> and uh, then she's like, I, well, I, I, I can't leave the cash register. I'm like, I just went, I, 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 I don't feel like I'm doing, doing your work. <laughs> I said, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I don't feel like doing someone else's job. That's what I said. And I just kind of went, eh, <laughs> I walked out the door. So we left all those things there yesterday. I'm like, and I talked to myself on the way out to the car, like that was an interesting excursion. But you know, lo and behold, I had a beer at home. I had a sour beer, <laughs> a sour beer and a, a made up quesadilla because I had a little bit of cheese left. So I went back today and got a lot of those items. Didn't buy a beer because I have a beer. You can work on the Festina Pesce dogfish head <laughs> or a soda. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm feeling a little indulgent. I've been waking up. My weight is... Uh, a 140, 141, uh, where all through winter I was about 138, so I may have put on a few pounds, and I'm feeling a little indulgent, both in extra cheese on my quesadilla, uh, beer, and, and whatnot, and soda, <laughs> and uh, not doing as much uh, cardio at the gym. Not that I ever did a whole lot, but <laughs> like yesterday, my, my 10 or 15 minute treadmill was five minutes, and I'm like, Good job. <laughs> I was like, that's what I want. Now can I have a beer? <laughs> so, you know, I'll work that little angle, but as soon as I kind of tell that I'm getting out of it, if I'm, if I have to buy new clothing, um, I will, I will change my habits. <laughs> so let's just say I'm being a little indulgent. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> so what to do I've got a segue I can have a beer and I can get ripped ripped for me I don't really need a whole lot of alcohol to get ripped and saucy but I thought shit I might just fucking need to be saucy today try and you know knit this sh <laughs> shit take together <laughs> uh but i did get i i got an email from nicholas ah capello he's gonna be in town he's getting a tattoo wants to know if i'm well he didn't he didn't, just wanted to say he's hanging around so i could get ripped or i didn't bring two beers he might want a beer I don't know. Maybe I will do some work of knitting shit take together on the website and then perhaps get back to him. It might be something different <laughs> to do. <laughs>